a canine. They shouldn't have even pursued them. They should have let them give themselves up. I'm sure they would have given themselves up with the, with the grandmother. Where is this grandmother that they dumped the baby with? Where's that doll? I'd like to see her background. How about a background check on grandma? That's the, the daughter's, the one who apparently radicalized this poor innocent uh, health inspector. Health inspector. He goes around to restaurants to see if there's rat turd in a, in a hamburger. Health inspector. He got the lowest possible job you could get. But nevertheless, he started somewhere. And uh, she radicalized him. He had no beard. He went to Saudi Arabia on a Hajj. During the Hajj, they fixed him up with the, the doll from Pakistan. Then he comes back and he has a beard and he's praying six times a day, building pipe bombs, collecting weapons, hanging out with guys in the garage in the middle of the night. And no one, no, one guy saw it and wanted to call a policeman. And he was afraid to be accused of racial profiling. It shows you how we've been destroyed already. It just shows you how common sense has been warped and destroyed in this country. The SUV was rented three days ahead of the attack. Two assault rifles and two handguns found in the possession of the suspects were purchased several years ago, according to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Both officials with the FBI and San Bernardino Police Department declined to say whether Wednesday shooting spree at the inland region was motivated by terrorism. They're still investigating it. They were investigating it, but investigators already tracked down four individuals from the L.A. area who were previously under some sort of investigation by counterterrorism officials and have had some sort of communication with Freak. You know, you know him as Farouk. In other words, they had him on the radar and they flopped again. He, he, they slipped through the cracks because of Obama gave him the hands-off job. You know what it's all about. The, the field officers knew this guy was no good. They knew he was about to go off. The last contact any of those other individuals had with Freak was in June, however, and the source said nothing fruitful had come of the interviews with those individuals because they couldn't waterboard them. If they had waterboarded them, I guarantee a lot of fruitful information would have come out. Would they sit and have tea with the guy? They had mint tea and they sipped tea because it was the rules of engagement. They'd ask them some questions. Well, thank you, sir. Well, that's, we don't want to upset you. Investigators are still probing the possibility that Freak, who was a U.S. citizen, and Malik, the Freak's wife, who held a Pakistan passport, may have been radicalized by Islamist extremists, either in the U.S. or during trips the couple made to the Middle East, including to our good friends in Saudi Arabia, the land of, uh, the land of peace and harmony. All right, well, that's the latest story. That's all. You want to comment on any of this? Go ahead, make my day, comment on some of this. Officials are still working to determine the motive. Yeah, everyone knows the motive. Planned attack. Everyone goes to work in body armor in, a, in an SUV with loaded pipe bombs. But uh, they'll figure it out. They're working on a narrative to give Obama and his radical regime so they can come up with it tomorrow. That's all. Play Blumenthal's voice. Just if you want to get sick to your stomach, this is a sitting U.S. senator from Connecticut who comes out. I never saw anything like this. What sane nation on earth would have a nut like this in the U.S. Senate? Listen. What can make a difference, and clearly the evidence of mass shootings, in fact, there is a okay, mass stop. shooting Okay, Robert, are you running this at a higher speed? Robert, are you speeding up the recording in some way? Are you sure that nobody put laughing gas into the room while he was speaking? Okay, listen to Frito Blumenthal now. This is a U.S. senator a day after attack, like, an attack like this. Listen. There are measures that can be taken that will make these mass shootings less likely. Background checks, better enforcement as okay, is apparent. We need a background check on Blumenthal. That's what we need, an immediate background check on Blumenthal and a background check on everyone in the Senate who is apologizing for these people. That's all. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. Every day in this country can be prevented by background checks, extending those background checks to the unlicensed sales and also closing the loopholes that exist right now in the laws. You know, These kinds of loopholes speaks, make a real... When Senator Blumenthal laughing gas speaks, there's a mass hooting. There's a mass hooting throughout the, the blogosphere. No one could believe a man who speaks like that would become a senator except in Connecticut. Then it makes perfect sense. 
Yeah, there's a mass hooting every time he speaks. Here's a new one for you. Dems blast Republicans for demonizing Muslims. The Democratic National Committee renewed its push for Syrian refugees to be admitted to the U.S. today, Thursday morning, less than 24 hours after the San Bernardino shooting. Two main suspects are Muslims, one originally from Pakistan. But listen to this. In a statement just published, DNC Lunatic Chair Representative Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz reports a conference call held Wednesday in which she and other Democrats bashed Republicans over the refugee issue. Here comes the punchline, which they compared to Jews fleeing Nazi Europe. It's not even worthy of a reply. If you could compare Syrians, Muslim Syrians, to Jews fleeing Nazi Europe, you truly are mentally ill. Not only does it insult the Jews who fled Hitler, insults common sense to make such a comparison. Now, let's go to the callers, because I've given you an awful lot today. I can read my notes, if you'd like. Here are some of my notes. We've gone from Bonnie and Clyde to Farouk and Tashfin. Uh, Malik, a native of Pakistan, came to the U.S. on a, fin on a fiancé visa and later became a so-called lawful permanent resident. Did you know that Obama created a new loophole for Muslims? Well, anyone, actually. A fiancé visa? That's a, that's a new one. A fiancé visa. That means anyone could come in now. Uh, and You don't even need a fake green card. Not even a marriage now. Not even a fake sham marriage, which has been going on forever in this country. But a fiancé visa. <laughs> By the way, where is DH Chief J... Johnson. I don't know where Fed Johnson is. No one could find him. Why isn't his mosque being investigated for other associated problem adherence? I wrote this morning. Why isn't the mosque where this guy prayed every day being looked into by the FBI? <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me, but you see. Should care be closed down for covering up the slaughter? by saying that they don't know why. It could be rage. It could be work-related. Let's see what else I wrote. Where is the third shooter? Oh, you forgot about that already? Every eyewitness there stated there were three shooters. In fact, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I remember all day long we heard three shooters. Three shooters! I'm Shep Smith. Go and get Shep Smith, the dumbest man in the history of broadcast media, who doesn't even fit, in, fit into his thin suits anymore. I don't know what he's on. What is Shep Smith doing to his body? He looks blow ballooned up. They have to buy him a new suit every day at Fox News. Even that moron said that there were three shooters. Yesterday, turn on, rerun the tape. Three shooters, three active shooters. Wolf, it's back to you. Well, we're following a, a, an incident. It could be workplace related because they came from a party somewhere in, in, in San Bernardino. And we don't know who's there, but we know there's three active shooters. Back to you, Melissa. Three active shooters, 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 three active shooters. There's one active shooter on the ground and two in a car. Well, now there's only two active shooters. Now now there's one active shooter, three active shooters. Wolf, I don't know how many there are. Wolf, how many active shooters are there? I don't know. I don't know. Ask the FBI how many active shooters. There were three yesterday. Now there's what? Two? Bonnie and Clyde got bl bl blasted in their car. And the other one they said was just involved. They don't know who he was. He was there. They shot him. They put him away. They let him go. They, they was for, wanted for another an outstanding traffic ticket. Who was he? Who was he? Everyone's asking. Anyone with a brain is saying, wait a minute, stop, stop the tape. We're not that dumb. Can anyone listening to the show tell me they didn't hear three, that there were three yesterday? Raise your hand. There were three yesterday. Now today, oh, no, there were only two. The other one disappeared. Yeah, we had him, we arrested him, we released him. He had nothing to do with it. He's just there by accident. What are you there by accident? He wasn't there by accident. They were in this together. Didn't they go in that clinic, three of them, and give a spraying? All right, that's what we were told. Three men first. Now, the biggest shock was that there was a woman. I love that one this morning in the media. Oh, Wolf, did you hear there was a woman? No, that's not possible. Women don't do those things. All women are good. This is bad for Hillary if it's a woman. Because all women are peace-loving. All women are peaceful. We can't have a woman, Wolf. Well, I'm afraid that there's a woman involved. Well, that's not possible. I've never heard of anything like this, said the little men in the media. Never heard of a woman involved in terrorism. I guess they didn't know that in Paris, the women massacred pretty good on, the, uh, on that uh, floor there. 
They pulled out knives. They mutilated people. Oh, yeah, women did that. You didn't follow it up with the story, the, the facts. I did. Your Muslim friends, your practitioners of the religion of peace in Paris, after they executed those young people in the dance hall in Paris, they slowly tortured them with knives. They mutilated them. The same way your friends in the PLO, it came out only yesterday, 20 years after the fact, castrated an Israeli athlete who they, who they first tied up. The wrestler made the other Israeli athletes watch as they cut his private parts off. Because, you know, it's not in their religion book to do things like this. These are just rogue terrorists who get it in their own mind to do things like that. It's not inherent in the people. It's not inherent in their bloodthirsty cult. No, no, it's just pure rogue people who do things like this. So I would say that there's nothing to worry about in bringing in 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 Syrian males of mil military age. Because even if it's 1% of 100,000, that's 1,000 terrorists possible. Aren't we told that it's only 1% who might be right? Well, yesterday there were two of them. So now 1% of 100,000 is 1,000 people. So now magnify yesterday by 50, and that's what's going to happen in this country, just on a statistical basis. I know you sound like can't be. Come on, Savage Earth. They told us that only 1% could be radical. So that's 1,000 possible yesterday, right? 1,000 of them. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Last 30 minutes of this very long, long, hard day. Can someone please explain to me how three people got out of that that SUV? We saw three people come out of it. Remember during the final shootout, I saw three people get out of it. We saw we heard there were three people shooting in the building, according to all the eyewitnesses. How did that change to two people somewhere along the way? Who was the third person? You know, this can become like the Zagruda tapes. This keeps up. It's like the Boston Marathon bombing. You remember the strange videotape of men <clears throat> with black backpacks with headphones who were seen walking near the Sonoff brothers just before the bomb went off? I remember that. Nobody ever explained who they were. Instead, we were told, go, move along, nothing to see here. All these terrorist events happening. Wow, crazy. My God, we better not focus on this. You know, it's very upsetting. Take your pills. Go to a nice, go see a movie. See one of Zuckerberg's uh, friends' movies. Go see a nice movie by Harvey Weinstein, some violent film or some slutty pornography produced by Hollywood. You'll feel better. Take some Soma. Get your mind off these things. Don't focus on these things. I mean, you know, what do you, why do you want to focus on things like this? It only makes you upset. Isn't ignorance bliss? Isn't war peace? Isn't happiness sadness? Isn't sadness happiness? Isn't reason painful? Why do you want to reason when it's so painful? Just take Soma. Take your Soma and listen to the government's messages. They're very soothing. And take the guns away from everybody. Because guns are dangerous. Look what they did yesterday. Ipso facto, guns are bad. I mean, guns are very bad. Look what they did yesterday with guns. If there were no guns, there would be no violence. Well, and they would use knives. If there were no knives, they used sticks. And those sticks, they would... Let's go back 1,400 years when there were no guns. How in 25 years did the Muslims conquer such a large portion of the earth without guns? What were they using? Uh, oh, let's see. They, they raped. They killed uh, with stones. So you could say stone violence. I mean, when you stone a woman to death or you stone a homosexual to death, that's stone violence. So you could outlaw all the stones in the Middle East and get a, then they only have sand. They bury you in sand. Ah, oh, darn it. There must be some way to stop this violence. Then we could live in a perfect liberal world. Look, I'm going to go back to my main point. I can only be sarcastic up to a point. I love sarcasm because it relieves me of tension. I made one point, which is that only racial profiling can help prevent the next Muslim jihad in the U.S. I stand by those words, and I'll tell you why. The neighbors said he was a construction worker. He saw Middle Eastern men going in and out of the garage for a long period of time. Of course, they were building pipe bombs, we know now. And he wanted to report them, but his friends, he didn't want to do it. He thought his friends would consider him a racist. Now, this means that you've been destroyed already. Your mind has been destroyed. I say we need racial profiling in all police work, as we had in this country for a long period of time. The only way we'll ever survive is with racial profiling. Agree or disagree? Ari on WFTL, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, I'm, I'm an ex-Israeli Sky Marshal. I was eight years a Sky Marshal in Israel anti-terror unit when I was younger. But I still uh -huh. training. When I heard your message this morning, 
I mean, not this morning, a few hours ago.